Good afternoon, everyone, and, and welcome. I'm uh, Margaret Jane Ogden Christie, and I'm the first reader. She has a brain tumor. On the 9th of December, 2019, Nancy underwent an eight-hour surgery to remove a massive, benign, non-aggressive brain tumor. About 90 to 95 percent was removed, with 5 to 10 percent deemed inoperable. This had been growing for an undefinable length of time, probably 40 years. By September 2019, it had become so large, it was pushing her essence away. She lost her passion for music, singing, playing the piano, teaching, directing the men's, the gentlemen's chorus, and leading a monthly hymn sing at Wickwire Assisted Living in Moorfell. It robbed her of her desire to read, write poetry, pageants and plays, design sweaters, create one on earth clothing for women, do up preserves, bake, garden, solve crossword puzzles and crypto quotes. Nancy was gone. A tumor appeared, a tremor appeared in her right hand. She needed help walking, getting up from a chair, and stairs were becoming a challenge. She would fall and was becoming incontinent. It wasn't until a year later that she realized the compression had affected both her hearing and her vision. Nancy was displaying many symptoms of Parkinson's disease, and her family doctor was treating her for this. But not 100% sure, he decided to refer her to a neurologist in Halifax. On October the 4th, 2019, she was examined extensively by Dr. Heather Rigby at the Halifax Infirmary. Dr. Rigby stated, and I quote, this is not a classic case of Parkinson's disease, unquote, and requested a PET scan, CAT scan, MRI, all which took place on November 25th. That was the day that Warren and Nancy's life changed. She was immediately admitted to the Halifax Infirmary, and after the surgical team was assembled, two weeks later, she underwent the surgery. On December 21st, she was transferred to Valley Regional Hospital to continue her recovery and remained there beginning physiotherapy and occupational therapy until she was admitted to the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center in mid-February. All this time, she was on pureed food because she had not regained her swallowing reflex. While in Kentville, Nancy was transported by ambulance to Halifax for a follow-up consultation with the, the neurologist, Dr. Rigby, and at another time had an EEG. In total, she had eight EHS transports to and from Halifax. After her departure from the rehabilitation center the first week of March, COVID-19 became the pandemic which spilled over into 2021. She was discharged one week before the lockdown. During that week, prior to the lockdown, she began working at the Acadia Sports Therapy Clinic. When the COVID-19 restrictions are completely lifted, she will start a regular routine there. While in Kempfel, there was a visitor who said her recovery was a miracle. Nancy explained she was not the miracle. The miracle happened when she was offered a cancellation appointment with the neurologist for October the 4th, which she accepted. Her own appointment was scheduled for much later in 2020. If she hadn't taken the cancellation date, Dr. Adrian Weeks, her neosurgeon, stated she would not have survived until her scheduled appointment. If Dr. Peter Segato, her family physician, had not felt the need for a second opinion, Nancy would not be here today. This was the miracle. 
Her road to recovery will be very long. Part of her life consists of setting attainable goals and working through them one at a time. This sacred recital is her first challenge. Working with her occupational therapist, Matt Miller, at the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center, they came up with the idea of designing a workable program with breaks after four selections to regenerate her energy. She has selected the music, four genres of sacred music, classical, gospel, contemporary, and spiritual, arranged them in a logical order, and prepared the music for her accompanist. It is her sincere wish that any applause will be withheld until the completion of each set, after the spiritual. Balancing and mobility are also part of her daily routine. This was all part of the exercise, cognitive and physical skills addressed. Being in large crowds is problematic, hence no reception today. It is her hope that she and Warren can meet you all at the door. As Darren Booth, a former voice student and member of the Gentlemen's Chorus, as well as her physiotherapist at Acadia Sports Therapy Clinic, said to her sister-in-law, Patty, we now have our Nancy back, and thank God for that.
beautiful, the beautiful Gather with the saints by the river that froze by the throne of God. Soon we reach the shining. Our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with a melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather by the The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints by the river That flows by the throne of God That flows by the throne of God Almighty 
Words of gratitude to the medical community. The following gifted Nova Scotians enabled Nancy to heal and begin her recovery. Without their professionalism in their chosen fields, dedication to the well being and comfort of their patients, and the unwavering commitment to see each individual return to a level of competence that had been there, that had been lost for one reason or another. The Nova Scotia health care system would not be what it is today. Dr. Peter Sagato, family physician, Mud Creek Clinic. Dr. Heather Rigby, neurologist, Halifax Infirmary. Dr. Allison Dixon, Resident Neuro Neurologist, Halifax Infirmary. Dr. Adrian Weeks, Chief Neurosurgeon, Halifax Infirmary. Dr. J. Han, Resident Neurosurgeon, Halifax Infirmary. Dr. David Brandeman, 
resident neurosurgeon, Halifax Infirmary. Ms. Samantha Warren, registered nurse, brain tumor specialist, Halifax Infirmary. Dr. Michael Mulheron, physician, Valley Regional Hospital. Dr. Melissa Broders, physician, Valley Regional Hospital. Dr. Emily Patterson, physician, Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center, Halifax. Dr. Robert Poulos, physician, Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center, Halifax. Dr. Anita Mountain, physician, Nova Scotia Reha Rehabilitation Center, Halifax. Dr. Victoria Kuta, resident ENT physician, Victoria General Hospital. Dr. Paul Morgan, physician, Valley Regional Hospital. Dr. Michael McClure, physician, Valley Regional Hospital. Ms. Dana McNamara Morse, nurse practitioner, stroke specialist, Valley Regional Hospital. Dr. Kristen Akita, seizure specialist, Halifax Infirmary. Mr. Timothy Fisk, audiologist, Wolfville Hearing Clinic. Dr. Sheldon J. Potier, optometrist, FYI doctors, Wolfville. Technicians and other professionals, X-ray, PET scan, CAT scan, MRI, and EEG technicians, hematologists, hospital pharmacists, and dietitians. Physio and occupational therapists, Aaron Lake, physiotherapist, Karen Ferguson, physiotherapist, Daniel Booth, physiotherapist, Denise Leonard, occupational therapist, Matt Miller, occupational therapist, and Jonathan Belbin, occupational therapist. Supporting staff at all three hospitals, registered nurses, licensed uh, practical nurses, housekeeping, chefs and food, deliverers, volunteers and wheelchair transports, a heartfelt thanks for all your care and encouragement. EHS, ambulance transports, from one hospital to another, and three from home to Valley Regional. Many thanks for your gentle deliveries. A free will offering. The proceeds from this recital will be divided among the following. The Halifax Infirmary, the neurosurgical floor, 7.3. The Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center, the brain injury recovery, seventh floor. Valley Regional Hospital Foundation, CT scan for life. The Acadia University Sports Therapy Clinic. Envelopes are available for free will offering and can be put in the basket at the back there. If writing a check, please make it out to Nancy Denton Peck or Nancy Denton. And in the left-hand space with the memo, you could simply write sacred recital. Thank you for your generosity. Shall the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstoppered? Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. I 
and the tongue of the dumb shall sing. in 
Jesus' name. one ever, oh, ever to know of the birth of Jesus was a maid Mary, was Mary the maid of Galilee, and blessed is she, is she who
know Has you seen him, my lord? These worlds are wilderness of woe And let us all to heaven go Has anybody here seen my Jesus? Anybody here seen my Lord? I want to know, has you seen my Jesus? I need to know. Has you seen him, my Lord? This gospel train is moving fast, then let us go to heaven at last. Has anybody here seen my Jesus? Anybody here see my Lord? I want to know, has you seen my Jesus? I need to know, has you seen my Lord? Thank you. Thank you. Special thanks to family, neighbors, and friends near and far. Nancy wants to say thank you to her family, her daughter Anna, who sat by her side in Kentville, tenderly holding her hand and to her son, Josh, who was provided all the time necessary to visit her in Halifax. Heartfelt thanks to all her family for their love and support. And the neighbors who provided care for Warren with meals, and words of encouragement. She is most grateful for all her friends, near and far, who sent cards and wishes for a speedy recovery. In January 2021, she resumed voice lessons with her teacher in New York City on speakerphone. This was part of her recovery and healing therapy to rebuild and strengthen her voice. 
It wasn't until January 2020 that she actually became interested in singing again. A sincere thank you is extended to Dr. Michael Warren in New York City, who encouraged her to follow this path of recovery. Words cannot express the profound appreciation for Warren's deep devotion and caring throughout this ordeal. It must be remembered that on November 25th, his own life took a turn for the unknown. There were several very dark days following surgery, and it was words of encouragement from Warren that enabled her to get beyond them. He's been with Nancy every step of the way, by her side during consultations with her doctors, asking the pertinent questions when she was unable to express her concerns. In constant communication with the members of the family, purchasing a cell phone to enable contact at all times, picking up her sisters the day before surgery to enable them to be there at the hospital along with Josh and himself for the long day of waiting keeping friends and neighbors informed of changes in her condition, alerting family members when a second MRI revealed what might have been an infection, and her immediate return from rehab to the infirmary for a week of tests. Always being at the hospital before the ambulance arrived, whether it was Valley Regional, the Halifax Infirmary, or the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center, becoming very knowledgeable about brain injury and the healing process by reading available literature on the subject, assisting with her physio and occupational therapy while in Kentville at Valley Regional, When she was released for a weekend pass from the rehabilitation center, she arrived home to find a welcome home card, a beautiful bouquet of flowers, another vase full of red roses, a new bed, and two new chairs in the living room, which she had chosen two Saturdays before their three and a half month adventure began. Warren also kept a detailed journal from the day of surgery to her admittance to the Nova Scotia Rehabilitation Center. Nancy continued the daily journal while there. One year ago, on May 27th, Nancy experienced three seizures as a result of adverse effects of the anti-seizure drug she was taking. After calling her doctor in Wolfville, she was admitted to emergency at Valley Regional, where she remained for observation and the 9th and 10th transports by EHS to Bridgewater for a CAT scan, because the CAT, CAT scan machine was not operational at Valley Regional at the time. A second EEG in Halifax was also part of this ordeal. She was on a new medication and released. But on June 29th, she had to return to Valley Regional as she was experiencing the transition from one anti-seizure drug to another and had several days of seizures before everything was adjusted. She was sent home and is now on a medication that has been successful in controlling the seizures. 
Once again, Warren never left her side, receiving special permission to be with her during the pandemic lockdown. It is because of all these things she dedicates this recital to her husband and best friend, Warren.
Jesus, I surrender. I believe, Lord, help my unbelief at the altar. A frightening place, this world of ours, the frantic pace of changing powers, where no one plays familiar roles, but with these times, one promise holds. I can ride the morning winds, and you are there. I can say Night, and you are there, oh Lord, I can never be lost from you. Decisions rise that must be made, I compromise so debts are paid. It's all too much for me to cope, but with your touch, 
I find new hope. I can ride the morning winds, and you are there. I can sail the wild seas, and you are there. I can find the dark. Night, and you are there. Oh Lord, I can never be lost from you. Please search me now and know my heart and show me how to do my part. To walk the way you'd have me go, and if I stray, Lord, still I know I can ride the morning winds, and you are there. I can sail the wild seas, and you. I can find the darkest night, and you are there. Oh Lord, I can never be lost from you. I can never. Come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes were blind, we couldn't see. We didn't know who you were. Lord, time ago you were born born in a manger low sweet little Jesus boy the world treat you mean Lord treat me mean too but that's how down here we don't know who you are you have taught us how we are trying master you done shown us how even when you were dying. 
just seems like we can't do right. Look how we treated you. But please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know twas you. Born long time ago, sweet little holy child, and we didn't know who you were. No, we didn't know who. Thank you. Thank you. A lineage, a love, loyal friends, and last but not least, my connection to the Wolfville Baptist Church far extends what is chronicled in the program. My mother's grandfather, Gordon Gowdy, from Yarmouth County, was the master mason during the construction of this magnificent building. My grandparents, George and Luella Denton, were members of this church. My parents, Doug and Jeanette Denton, were members of this church. My brother Richard was baptized in this sanctuary, attended Sunday school, Raymond Jefferson's Boys Club, and young peoples. My sisters, Peggy and Janet, attended Sunday school in this church. A love. My husband, Warren, was baptized in this sanctuary in 1966 and has been a member ever since. He attended Sunday school Raymond Jefferson's Boys Club, and Young People's during his youth. After more than 30 years, we reacquainted and were married in this sanctuary in 2005 by the Reverend Dr. Barry Morrison. The congregation was invited to the ceremony and a wedding cake was shared with everybody in the vestry. Loyal friends, thank you to my three dear friends, Margie Jane, Sylvia, and Mary Ellen, for so willingly agreeing to be my readers. Last but not least, a special thank you to Heather Price for her brilliance at the piano. <laughs> to the Wolfville Baptist Church 
for their continued love and support for me throughout my life. To the technicians, Giselle Caron and Mike Robertson, for their abilities to record this afternoon's performance, and a special thank you to Rob Rayside for his assistance in helping me to organize the images for each one of my selections. To Peter Brown for his diligence in keeping us safe within these walls. To Peter McKay for agreeing to be my scrutineer. To Gaspro Press for their beautiful program. And to all of you for coming to support my way of paying back the medical community. In the early 70s, a new hymn book entitled The Hymnal was introduced to this congregation. Little did I know the impact number 343 would have on my life. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Mask time. And here comes my love. 